Hi everyone, my name is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com and I spend most clear nights in my backyard photographing nebulae with my telescope. I say most clear nights because sometimes I photograph galaxies too. To take pictures of deep sky objects in space, you need to compensate for the apparent rotation of the Earth with an equatorial tracking mount. And in my case, that's the Skywatcher EQ8R Pro. Riding on top is the Skywatcher Esprit 100 refractor telescope and there's a monochrome CCD camera at the end. Because I take my images from the city where there's a lot of light pollution, I have to use specialized filters that isolate the gases associated with these nebula. So hydrogen alpha is a really important one, but you also need oxygen three and sulfur two to complete the image. True color RGB images are amazing too, but they're a lot harder from light polluted areas. However, with careful processing, you can of course take amazing full color images in RGB from the city as well. This is a computerized go-to telescope mount, so I can simply punch in the object I wanna see on the hand controller and it will go straight there. To do that properly, however, the mount needs to be polar aligned, balanced, and star aligned so it knows where to point in the night sky. Tonight, I'm gonna to shoot a really exciting planetary nebula called the Dumbbell Nebula. This one is really bright. So bright, in fact, that you can see it in binoculars or a small telescope, even from the city. The monochrome camera I'm using is different than a regular daytime photography camera that captures full color images with that RGB Bayer filter on top. This is a monochrome camera, so black and white images that I have to shoot through each filter to build a color image. It might seem like a lot of work, but it's worth it in the end because you get a lot more useful signal per shot with that monochrome camera that's not separating things into color buckets. The camera was designed for one thing and that's deep sky astrophotography. So even though it's a bit of a one trick pony, it is really good at what it does. This green disc you see in front of the camera is a filter wheel and I can automatically choose which filter I wanna shoot through to take my images. All of this is of course running through a computer where I can actually control everything through software. The types of filters that you want to use will of course depend on the project that you're shooting, so you'll want to do some research before getting into it. The object I'm shooting tonight, the Dumbbell Nebula, has a really strong signal in oxygen and hydrogen alpha. I've already collected a lot of data in the oxygen 3 bandpass, so tonight's all about that precious H alpha. To create the final image, I'll stack as many sub exposures as I can that are seven minutes long to create an impressive image in Adobe Photoshop. Astrophotography is all about piling on the data so you have enough signal to work with. You can probably see that moon behind me and a few clouds as well. It's funny with all the challenges to astrophotography with the equipment and the camera settings and the processing, one of the most frustrating elements of the hobby itself is actually getting under clear skies so you can actually take pictures. When you're just getting started, that adds a lot of pressure under a clear night sky to get things to work. You feel like you're on the clock. My advice there is to just be patient. That sky isn't going anywhere. And even if you lose a season to clouds, there's always next year. Those clouds never did leave, so here we are on Thursday night and I can finally get going. That's a great lesson for the way astrophotography actually is. You really have to be patient. The sun has set now and uh, I'm going to start setting up, framing up my target and focusing the telescope. So I'll take you through that. So you need some way to control the camera and the telescope, especially when it comes to dedicated astronomy cameras. They're not like a DSLR with that touch screen display on the back. I've connected to a computer that I've got pretty well dedicated to this setup here. Uh, it's all connected, all the drivers and software are there. And then I use a program called Astrophotography Tool to automate a series of images. And now there's a lot of software choices available for this, more than there ever have been. I would look into Astrophotography Tool, APT, Nina, and Sequence Generator Pro are some of the top contenders in this category.
focusing the camera and telescope is one of those things that can be really difficult at first. I use a Batonoff mask, which is a refreshingly old school method used to focus the telescope. And uh, basically it creates this pattern. And then you can see through a live loop of the camera that uh, you're looking for that star diffraction pattern and you want that central spike to be in the center. It's a great foolproof way to focus and of course you need a bright star to do it. So I should clarify it now because I know I'm gonna hear it in the comments. There are better ways to focus your telescope than a Batonoff mask, such as an autofocuser that will focus for you between when you switch filters and all that. The Batonoff mask method, you manually need to recheck it throughout the night because as that temperature changes, so does your focus. Okay, so the camera is connected. I'm gonna start the cooler and because it's a really hot night, I'm expecting this camera to not get anywhere past minus 20 degrees Celsius. And that really does help with the, uh, reduce the thermal noise with a cooled camera. So what you're looking at on the screen was the last target I looked at, which was the ring nebula. I was just kind of seeing what it looked like at this magnification and it's still just way too small at a thousand millimeters. But let's hop over to the Dumbbell Nebula now so you can see what that looks like. So I'm just gonna hit M27, which is the Dumbbell, and the telescope mount will slew the scope and camera over to it. Hopefully it's clearing my roof by now. I think it's just high enough. Okay, perfect. So you can really see why they call it the Apple Core Nebula uh, when shooting it in H-Alpha. So that's the nebula there. Um, just to show you how live this is, let me change the slew rate to three. And I'll change this exposure down to four seconds. And I'll just uh, line this target up, center it just a little bit more. So I'm just pressing the, the arrow keys on the hand controller. So I moved it that way. Let me just go the other direction. I've got a little target uh, that I can overlay that I can put on the screen to, to help me with this. So just a little bit past it, we're pretty well in the center. Uh, for targets like this, it's you know essentially a circle shape right in the center of the frame. Makes framing very, very easy. You've got a lot of room to play with. So there is the Dumbbell Nebula in H-Alpha and I'll begin taking my pictures now.